Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner. And today we're going to talk about play to earn play to and earn. economics. This is going to be a fun discussion. I mean, yeah. we were we we're talking about this for several days now and then a couple of hours well, into this discussion. Yeah, but we've been on the topic for several years now, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know what? It, everything uh, throughout this journey, this several-year journey that you speak of, I-Man, yeah. so many things have been developed that change and morph like our perception of play to earn. True. That... Um, Pretty much every month, like there's a new project, there's a new problem, there's a new solution that it morphs what the final outcome we think play to earn should be in order to create that sustainability. Yeah. So so this is going to be one of those topics where we have pretty frequently because it's important. Yeah, for, for a variety of reasons, right? Because we're actively building in this space and we're actually active participants yeah. in a lot of cases. and. I don't know. We've been observers for, like I said, several years now, so we we have a pretty good gist of yeah. what's going on. And yeah. clearly, there's a lot of like flaws, just like anything new, like you know, any emerges emerging sector, technology, innovation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there's always going to be holes that need to be, you know, plugged. Yeah, you know, like problems that need to be solved. So, typically, whenever you're you're talking about like from like a you know, speculators' perspective, you like to identify these things early, right? These problems, these yes. flaws, because whenever you find the right solutions to them, like it's usually tremendous, you know, value proposal there. Yeah, right? upside potential. Upside potential, adoption potential, whatever you want to call it, right? Like if, if whoever is attempting to solve these problems, if they do it correctly and they get enough people to buy into their solution, right. like right. you're talking, you know, monumental gains, right? So th that's the speculator perspective why it's, interesting to hear these discussions right absolutely yeah and, and that's why it's so important like if you're listening for you know different youtubers out there talking about you know next 100x and yeah um you know it's important to have a perspective on things because when you're building in, in the space you have like an understanding of, of like the different problems and so um, yeah understanding those problems and then looking for solutions out there like Potentially, what we're going to talk about today is a solution to, you know, the sustainability of play to earn ecosystems. Yeah, and I guess, and if you've been keeping tabs, you, you probably understand why that's important because, I mean, there's been like a boom and a bust already pretty much with play to earn. Like, especially if you're like an Axie part of that ecosystem, there was a monumental boom. Yeah. And there's been like a crash to follow, right? So there's, 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 there's problems in every ecosystem, you know, so... Uh, yeah, let's let's move on to what what are the next steps, dude? Like, yeah, so we actually stumbled upon this project called AAG Ventures, and what they're they're claiming here is democratizing play to earn. So I read this, I was like, well, this is interesting. And as you can see here, they have a bunch of pictures of people holding up their cell phones playing Axie, right? Yeah. So this is pretty much the industry standard for play to earn. Like that's the definition of play to earn is Axie Infinity. Mm -hmm. Um, for a good reason, right? It's a multi-billion dollar project. They had a kind of like a good kind of launch and now they've expanded to like, you know, this, this craziness metaverse now, they, now they've, yeah, they've yeah. expanded the metaverse and, and yeah. I, we, we just read an article that it's like $10,000 for a parcel in Axie land. Probably like one of the cheapest ones. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a ridiculous amount of money for anybody, right? Whether you're a first world or third world, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyway, they're democratizing play to earn and, one of the things that we've uh, kind of understood is with uh, play to earn economies, there's an emission of tokens and the project tries to discover like sinks, reasons to spend the token or burn the token. Mm -hmm. And when you are creating a game where there is a disenfranchised population and you're trying to get them to play a game, there's no reason for them to hold the token or... Uh, or use a token or spend a token to upgrade anything. It's not even necessarily like a reason. It's just they, they just might not have the the flexibility that like, you know, yeah. members of, you know, a much more developed society where, where we have established sources of incomes. Are oh, you looking up the hierarchy thing? Yeah. <laughs> Good. This is what we're talking about. If, you, if you're like a psychology buff, there's like a, a very standardized you know, model when it comes to understanding like the, 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 the psychological priorities of human beings on earth, right? Like it's, it's called this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. So like, 
us members of like a Western society, first world, whatever the hell you want to identify ourselves as, like we're higher up on this chain of needs, right? Because our day to day aspects of of living in these type of you know economies is is to fulfill the bottom pillars, right? Right. Right. So like with our spare time, we're spending it you know more on the top end of this uh, hierarchy, right? So. The demographic of the people playing these type of play to earn games, they don't necessarily have the luxury to even get to that point at the yeah. top of the pyramid, do like they're yeah. still stuck on basic need world, right? So And that's over half of the population of the planet. Yeah, that's I think that's the silent majority, right? It's largely yeah. like the disenfranchised, the, the forgotten folks. Yes. You know, for whatever reason, there's like I don't know, like our current like, you know, capitalistic societies, it's just it's just not structured in a way to where it's not beneficial that everybody is like, you know, their basic needs are met to, yeah. the, to so, the same standards. You so know let's I mean? talk about like the uh, the reason why we're talking about this is is not only yeah, the, the play to earn discussion, but it, it's who the play to earn ecosystem is servicing, right? So there's essentially two parties. We just talked about how an axiom land is $10,000. So very few people could afford one piece of land. Right, and then you're talking about a play to earn game that requires some time, right? Some uh, time commitment by the player, and uh, and then the third aspect to that enables play to earn with cryptocurrencies is the internet access to the internet. So just like if we go back to the homepage of AAG, we have a ton of people holding up their cell phones. Yeah. Or why why aren't they holding up a desktop computer, I man? Yeah, I mean it's. It's unfeasible. Yeah. Why aren't they holding up an Xbox? Yeah. Right? Because it's too expensive. Yeah. And so these these folks, the, the disenfranchised, they have the time to commit to these games because they're getting the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So now when you're servicing this, uh, this population, the disenfranchised, they potentially likely don't have basic needs met because they live in like third world countries or... They have limited access to a lot of the, you know, the, the psychological needs, right? So when you're designing a play to earn game that is leveraging this population as, as, as a good design because you're enabling an entire ecosystem, right? An entire, you know, population of people, you have to think there's no reason for them to hold the token to any extent. And so then we yeah, largely out of the, the, Again, because it's the the reason for their participation in the first place is to fulfill that that basic need. That's killer, right, right, and and, and so, they can they they're yeah, able even if you present them with like this nice comfy like dude you know what you can do with these assets instead is like yeah like upgrade them and for turn, for future yield yeah, it's yeah. like when you're stuck down here at this end of the pillar <laughs> you're not thinking about future yield and like exercising my full potential. <laughs> yeah. Right, because you still got to meet these basic needs at the bottom of the pillar. Yeah, the pyramid, whatever the fuck. So they're always going to sell the token. They're always going to sell the token. So that presents they need to. The, that's a presents yeah. a big problem for the game designer is yeah. that you have a depress uh, depressing token. Yeah, you start losing the faith of your community. You start discouraging um, new players, new not, not only new players but new asset owners to come in and buy the assets. Yeah, because it, it just doesn't look like a rosy picture, right? Yeah. Like I don't want to invest in like a a, a, a falling a, knife, exactly. essentially, exactly. A falling exactly. dagger. And so, it, it's it's happening in a lot of different ecosystems, right? So clearly, this is like a an issue across the board. You know, obviously, Axie Infinity catalyzed like this 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 new movement of like you know breeding these whole new economies and stuff like that but just think back to like the early emergence of like the industrial age back in like the early yeah you know 1800s and stuff like that there was no structure back then there was a lot of like chaotic happenings i guess in all these yeah. different micro economies and stuff like that so just like there needed to be infrastructure in place financially back in those times i think that's largely what's missing across the board that doesn't really like um discredit what or it doesn't really. No, it's just it's just one of the t like time progression type things. The same things we talked about the metaverse, right? Like over the last few years, it's yeah. Like, we're so early in this stuff. Like, there's just always infrastructure that needs to be in place in order for like a true, you know, happening to happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Right now we're just like in this. Yeah, everyone's experimenting. Everyone's launching what they think they you know is is a a good ecosystem, but they're eventually they're all going to run into these same yeah problems. Yeah, right. Because yeah. it's 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 a fundamental like human problem you yeah. know yeah and and you know just to to have some perspective of what we're talking about that's why there's some 
there's some via, you know, validity in like a UBI where everyone has the mm-hmm. minimum standard of living, but then you get into like a debate of whether that's like communism or, you know, Marxism or whatever it is, which I mean, I, I, I don't think, you know, that's, you know, that's a topic for another discussion, but, but it, it does serve the need to address this big problem because over the half of the population doesn't have these basic needs. Right. So, yeah. so, okay. So now talking about play to earn and like the design. So hopefully we've outlined the problem where you, you have this token, you have this game and you are emitting these tokens to an ecosystem, a population that has no reason to hold on to the token. And so therefore the price just goes down. Right. So that problem potentially is solved through this concept through AAG is pioneering is democratization, which what they do is essentially they connect to all the play to earn games and they first, um, they have like an abstraction layer and I can show you what that an abstraction layer looks like. So they connect to the play to earn games, the video game studios themselves, the marketplaces like OpenSea, and then the different guilds out there that are amassing you know, this huge population of people. And what they do is they allow the game studios to connect to the AAG wallet. That wallet is connected to a bunch of guilds and players. That wallet um, has uh, asset owners with, uh, with an NFT that's going to help them yield a token. And then it gets delegated to the guilds. And so... But the token that is earned is is the, the guilds have an option to take the play to earn token and then convert that to an AAG token that has a ton of use cases. So this is an element of an abstraction layer that we think is needed, but I don't know if this covers all of the potential pitfalls that we've kind of discussed in like our prior prior discussion like not all of on, them on making this sustainable but it, it's it i think they're in the right page in the right track just because yeah if we get into like the actual you know uh, thesis behind like this project uh, which is what light papers white papers are it's, yeah. it's they're trying to solve like fundamental issues across the board like for all play to earn ecosystems just like the, the friction that exists within them because you know most play to earn ecosystems are targeting a specific demographic, right? Like first you got to target, you know, the crypto savvy yes. who, who end up being the owners. Yes. The basically the, the enablers within the ecosystem, like they own the assets. So they, they, they are the gatekeepers essentially, but the real target demographic is the player base, AKA, or you can refer to them as a labor force. Scholars. Scholars. Yeah. Whatever we could. Yeah. So those are mostly like the uncrypto savvy, the people you said who they don't have Macs, yeah. you know, they all, <laughs> they're all running, you know, with the same mobile p- platforms and devices, yeah. right? So yeah. like, you know, they don't have the opportunity and the, the access that we have to be such, you know, deep into the crypto sphere. So you've got to eliminate friction as much as possible right. for them. So like once we go through this whole proposal, to me, it sounds like AAG becomes like a, a services organization, right? Yes, because yes. That's what they're doing. They're funneling in the, the <clears throat> I guess, like the labor participation from like the masses who are like participating in all these individual micro economies. And they're, they're uh, giving them the opportunity to exchange the value they've accrued. Yes. For, for like the, these additional services that, that this organization, this umbrella organization called AAG will provide. Right. So, yeah. And they have a ton of services too. So yeah. just to give you kind of like an outline of what they do is they have smart contracts that NFT owners can use to lock up that asset. Right. So yeah. it could be, uh, you know, we're creating our own play to earn game called Rovies. You can lock up a Rovi into this smart contract, which allows their guilds who are connected to AEG to potentially delegate that nft that's locked up to a player so that they can go and play and uh and then the scholar would get 60 percent of the revenue that's generated by playing the game the nft owner gets 35 percent and aag gets five percent yeah and then what's interesting here is it it can be reduced down to one percent by staking aag mm-hmm. so um so where do aags come from in the first place that's probably one of the more critical services like i guess there are friction points they're trying to address by, you know, when you participate in all these play to earn economies, you're, you're being distributed all these random ass tokens. And a lot of these people probably have no idea how to actually like manage these types of assets and stuff like that. So they created like a nice reserve yes. type currency situation where you have the option just to like 
aggregate all that value into one easy to use currency, right? Yes, yes. So Very then, useful. so then now you're playing Axie, you're playing Rovi, you're playing all these games. You're earning the respective tokens for each one. Yeah. You don't necessarily know as a player how do I convert this, you know, cryptocurrency into uh, a stable, a, a coin, a, a yeah. currency that I can use in my home world. Exactly. Yeah, my and real world, yeah. So so what I do is I convert it to AAG, and through AAG, that's that's connected to all the off-ramps. Yeah, the services, right? Like, But then it also, it, so it puts also, I think, as this ecosystem is going to mature and expand, because they're facilitating that off-ramp services, they're also going to put it in the face of these, you know, this, this labor economy, this labor force, all the additional options they have with these assets, right? So, yeah. So one of them is uh, yeah. fractionalizing those NFTs. Yeah, that's an that's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, so so they they outline what we were mentioning earlier is that some assets are very expensive, a thousand dollars. And Axie land costs ten thousand bucks. And so what uh, one of the options is part of the smart contract is AAG discovers an NFT that they think is interesting and they invest in it. They will buy that asset, and then they would use their smart contracts that they developed and and sell fifty percent ownership share into that uh, that asset, and uh, and so anyone in the AG ecosystem can invest by sending AG tokens to that smart contract. So um, anyone with a dollar in AG tokens can invest in owning a revenue generating NFT. Yeah, which is what ultimately what they wouldn't be interested in investing in an NFT unless it had the potential to generate yield, right? Exactly. Like that's the whole premise behind these these ecosystems. So, I mean, that's huge. Like, now you can participate, you know, you could, you can allocate certain segments of your, your earnings to yes. potentially generate, you know, further yield. So, now you've not, you're not just meeting your basic needs. You're slowly climbing up that pyramid, right? Now you're starting to exactly self-actualize, right? Yes. All because of the services that AAG is providing you, right? So, yeah. In the traditional world, there's these services exist, right? But they're very fragmented. In, in, in a lot of cases, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to even, like, learn how to, like, take advantage of them and it's super regulated not everybody yeah. can participate yeah and it's just the access to them traditionally like up until recently have been it's been very difficult until like apps like robin hood and stuff that's like right. that emerged that's now true. they've created user friendly experiences for like the common man to become yes. like you know savvy investors potentially make a lot of money yeah and i, I think that's uh, inevitably what aag is proposing here it's like uh, yeah and this then, type of value and then so by participating in this ecosystem aag deploys the nft into the game to start generating yields so they're using they're the owner of these nft assets so the asset owner and therefore can delegate those assets to players and then aag distributes earned yield monthly so if you have a percentage stake into one of these assets you get a yield monthly by just because you invested money into it. And so clearly this kind of um, mimics the, um, the securities implications here, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's one of those um, situations where you have to just YOLO and actually implement something like this, because this is the only way to enable, you know, the billions who are disenfranchised and start participating. Yeah. And ultimately like at some point, like we have to, <laughs> Be less fearful, I guess, of like SEC yeah. like d doomsday events because it seems like the SEC is getting hit from all sides. Like, yeah, every single crypto project has like some, but yeah, yeah, it's true implication of SEC. Why? Like because these, these these type of mechanics are necessary for an economy like a vibrant, healthy, full fledged economy to exist. Right? You need you need fractional ownership of things. That's where commodities markets um, come That's from. Right. That's right. It's where equities markets come from. And like I said, we're, we're just now in like the very intro stages of like like an industrial type revolution. Yeah. Like Renaissance, the metaverse Renaissance is very like it's going to begin with like figuring out industry and like ways for people to you know make money. So with that, it's going to come obvious like uh, things that are going to need future regulation. You know? Yeah. But that's if you're a project founder, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <sighs> yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, yeah. there might be a come, a come a, a point in time where, like, you, you're going to get a slap on the wrist just because, oh, hey, you guys know, you know, these... Maybe, but they Maybe. The, the slap will come when they're successful. Yeah. They're, like, generating billions. Well, they, most and of them will be successful because, like I said, it's, it's necessary. Like, these yeah. things have to happen for yeah. economies to emerge. So, I, I like to see it. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> like, sure. Um, I like to see, like, projects pushing that boundary, right? Oh, absolutely. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can't just, like... Um, you know, follow the rules when there's a new technology that's being implemented and yeah. enabling an entire population that's yeah. been completely disenfranchised. 
Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a good outline as to what AAG is doing. It gives you an outline of the problems with play to earn. And I don't, I'll say this. I don't think this completely solves all the problems just because there's an issue not, yeah. with like a stable coin. Like there needs to be DeFi elements injected into play to earn ecosystems in order to make this actually sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe we'll leave that to another discussion. Well, yeah, we're going to be spending a lot more time trying to identify what everyone's attempting to do in the play to earn space. And yeah. cause play to earn, metaverse, it's all very connected. But yeah, like the, like you're saying, bringing in more DeFi components and mechanics into like, you know, what's happening in the metaverse yeah. is going to be very critical. It's like to finding like that ground ground level infrastructure for like economies yes. to emerge, yes. right? Like is a lot, lot of DeFi, and yeah, there's some DeFi components to this. So, yeah, there I, is. There this is. is the next step, right? Like, this is what you know. Projects need to start, you know, exploring. Yeah, in other words. and I, I do think we're going to see this a lot more often. But, uh, but yeah, so that that's been AEG. Hopefully, you guys uh, understand like all the little elements that we discussed today. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Follow our Twitter at the Block Runner and also at MetaZone.io, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>